some new channels, uh, channel 88 and 89, which will be bringing you some new content. They will be our movie channel with DVDs that we will be scheduling for you all, and also our streaming channel. So stay tuned. We will let you know what's in store for those channels. And hopefully we can add more things, uh, expanding our content um, and things that you enjoy. Um, as the show continues, we continue to come up with new ideas. You may see a few new upgrades to the room. If you haven't already, oh, oh, I'm going to Vanna White it now. Um, we, we have our official host mug and uh, we have a mailbox. So for anybody who'd like to send viewer mail, um, and it has a cute red flag. So whenever the flag is up, thank you, Allison. Whenever the flag is up, it means we have mail. We haven't gotten any mail yet. So um, please send us your comments and questions and we will share them on the show. Uh, you can write mail and give it to your friendly TAP activities person, or you can leave us a message by dialing the number 2813. Again, just pick up your phone, leave a message, dialing the numbers 2813. So for Mother's Day, uh, we have asked families to send videos, um, and we received a number of videos from your loved ones, which we will be showing on our morning show every day up to Mother's Day. So at the end, we will be sharing a video, so stay tuned for that as well. Today's show, we will be talking about self-care and mindfulness. So what is self-care? Well, self-care looks different for each individual person. According to Psych Central, self-care is an activity that we do deliberately in order to take care of our mental, emotional, and physical health. Although it's a, co a simple concept in theory, it's something we often overlook. Good self-care is key to improved mood and reduced anxiety. The American Psychological Association provides some self-care suggestions for older adults to help cope with some of the social isolation many are experiencing at this time. These include engaging in movement, limiting news consumptions, and keeping busy with solitary activities. So don't forget, reach out to your TAP activities person if there's anything that you need for your solitary in-room activities, like activity books, um, reading books, magazines, we can help you out with that. For me, right now, my self-care may look like listening to music, playing music, uh, checking something off my to-do list like laundry, uh, binge watching some of my favorite TV shows. I love Real Housewives of anything. Um, getting some fresh air, putting on a face mask, or my favorite, which is doing absolutely nothing. And that counts, folks. But talking about mindfulness, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is the practice of purposely bringing one's attention to the present moment without judgment. The app Headspace uh, describes this as being fully engaged with whatever we're doing at the moment, free from distraction or judgment, and being aware of our thoughts and feelings without getting caught up with them. With this shift in mindset, the benefits of your self-care routine can be amplified. And for many people right now, it's about finding new routines that work for you. In a little bit, our guests will be joining us today to talk about some of the ways we can disconnect from the outside world to connect deeper with ourselves. We have a great show planned for you today, so let's get into the news. Today is Monday, May 4th. 
Let's take a look at the weather in our neck of the woods. This weekend definitely showed us that April showers bring May flowers. We had a beautiful sunny weekend. Today will be a little bit cooler with clouds and sun and a possible chance of rain, although it looks pretty sunny out now. And temperatures will be in the 60s. Let's move to this day in history. May 4th, 1959, the first year of Grammy Awards by the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences are presented. May 4th, 2006, Picasso's portrait of his lover Dora Maar was sold in an auction at Sotheby's in New York for $95.2 million. The portrait was painted in 1941. And May 4th, thanks to the pun, may the 4th be with you, we now have Star Wars Days, which has become more like a real holiday in recent years. Get it? It's a play on May the Force Be With You. The events become even bigger since Disney purchased Lucasfilms and Star Wars movies franchise in 2012. And since then, May 4th has been a major platform for Star Wars merchandise. But the actual origins uh, of Star Wars Day and May the 4th Be With You stretches all the way back to 1970s, when it was first popularized by an unexpected source, Margaret Thatcher, and the United Kingdom's Conservative Party. The pun on May the 4th Be With You popped up several more times over the years, including once more in a UK parliamentary debate but wouldn't directly be linked to Star Wars themed holidays until 2008. So since then, May 4th has been a consistent day for fandom celebration. So for all you Star Wars fans out there, may the 4th be with you. And celebrating birthdays, celebrity birthdays today, Audrey Hepburn, born 1929 in Brussels, Belgium. She was known for being cast into roles such as Gigi on Broadway, uh, and her career started with Roman Holiday for which she won the 1953 Best Actress Oscar. After the birth of her son in 1961, she began work on Truman Capote's Breakfast at Tiffany's. Audrey Hepburn was a British actress and humanitarian. She was recognized as a film and fashion icon. She was ranked by the American Film Institute as the third greatest female screen legend in Golden Age Hollywood and was inducted into, into the International Best Dressed List Hall of Fame. And just to leave off with one of my favorite Audrey Hepburn quotes, for beautiful eyes, look into, into the good of others, for beautiful lips, speak only words of kindness, and for poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never alone. Speaking of birthdays, none of our residents are celebrating birthdays today, but happy birthday to anyone out there who is watching on YouTube. Also happening today, let's see what food services is cooking up for us. Today's lunch will be meatloaf with mushroom, gravy and peas, mashed potatoes, and fresh grapes for dessert. And for dinner, mushroom barley soup with fish croquettes, stewed tomatoes, and for dessert, tapioca pudding. Our guest for today is the director and managing attorney of the Weinberg Center for Elder Justice here at the Hebrew Home. She is also a certified yoga teacher and she leads our breathing and meditation group for staff wellness. Please welcome Joy Solomon. Hey, Olivia. Hi, Joy. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I need to hold this up like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a softer mic, so I'll have to speak into it a little bit more. Um, so we're so happy to have you here on the show. Um, I'm wondering a little bit, tell me about your journey. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do here. I know there's so much, but... Um, so my primary job yeah. is I run the Weinberg Center for Elder Justice here at the Hebrew Home, which um, started back in 2004. Um, and we provide... Uh, short-term shelter for people who are in the community who are being harmed often by their family members or other people that they trust and for whom home isn't a safe place so they come into the Hebrew home and the Weinberg Center team provides legal service and therapeutic service and uh, we do whatever we can do to support what that client wants and usually um, or often it's to get back home 
uh, sometimes they become long-term residents here. Yeah, such an important piece, especially of us thinking of this as a home to have shelter here and to feel safe. And those are always the things I think of when I think of the Hebrew home of safety. Yeah, and, and to come into you know, a community of very loving and caring staff um, and also of loving and caring residents. So for many of those clients, um, they've been kind of outside of community for a long time, so coming here is a really special part of their healing. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. What was your journey, how did your journey bring you to becoming an attorney and then later coming here? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, so I, I was a prosecutor at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office um, for almost 10 years, and there I did mostly child abuse and family violence, um, which I guess can sound kind of depressing and dark, but actually it's really great to help uh, yeah. people um, and people who experience abuse and violence. And um, so when older, I did work with older people at the DA's office, and when older people needed shelter, unlike younger women who might be able to access a domestic violence shelter, there were really none for older people. Um, so kind of fast forward, I really wanted to create a shelter for older people, and I met um, Mr. Reingold at a meeting, and the Weinberg Center was shortly born. Wow. Yeah. That's great. I think I also, the Weinberg Center for Elder Justice just sounds like a team of superheroes, and I know that they are with the work that they do. I mean, we have so many heroes here at the home, um, and I think the show also is just highlighting all the heroes and their superpowers and the way that they kind of, we all join forces together, and it's, it's, it has a big impact for, for older adults. Thank you. I, I think um, what I'm seeing recently, that the kind of superpower that feels most evident to me is compassion. Um, I see that a lot, and um, I think that the um, kind of um, root of the word compassion means actually to be with suffering, and I think that's what I'm seeing so much is that, you know, residents to each other, staff to residents, staff to each other are really being with each other right now through a very difficult time. And when you're really with someone in a difficult time, that feeling inside, that's something that we try to nurture and develop and grow. That's compassion. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing so much of, of um, with you and your work, also this, this piece of leading. I know you're a yoga teacher. You're working on also becoming uh, a, a meditation. Um, I'm getting certification as a mindfulness teacher. Mindfulness teacher. Yeah. And, um, and you lead our breathing workshops here for staff. I mean, that goes on all year round. This mm -hmm. isn't specific to this time. Where did that piece come into play in your life? Um, I actually um, ran the New York Marathon in 2001. And um, as part of the training, someone said to me, you know, you should really do yoga. And I was like, I'm really too busy to be doing yoga right now. And they said, that's exactly why you need to be doing yoga. And um, I started practicing yoga, and it's quite a beautiful practice because what it does is teach you how to become embodied, mm -hmm. that we are people that live in a body, mm -hmm. um, but so many of us live in our minds and we don't pay attention to our bodies, and so the practice of yoga helps you kind of re-enter your body, and then you realize that your mind and your body and your spirit are actually all connected, mm -hmm. so as I got more deeply interested in yoga and the physical practice, what was really kind of crying out to me was what's happening in my heart that I've not been paying attention to. So then I kind of went on the more toward the journey of meditation and mindfulness. That was really the most important thing for me. Yeah. What are um, some of the things that you can share? I know that you're often sharing with staff ways to be mindful, but what are some ways that the residents can kind of tap into that for themselves, especially during this time of, of you know, less social connection? So there's a beautiful quote by the great um, psychology teacher, um, I, think, I think it was Henry James. Maybe that's not the right person. <laughs> but anyway. It sounds um, good. <laughs> but the quote is that, you know, your life is what you pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So we can choose in the best of times to focus on what actually didn't go right, or we can choose to focus on what did go right. 
And the same is true in difficult times, that you can choose to focus and pay attention to what, what you do have um, and on gratitude so that you feel kind of a sense of abundance, or you can focus on all the things that you don't have, mm -hmm. um, and then you feel this quality of like scarcity. Mm -hmm. So in a time like this, um, for residents who have family members that they can't see, but they know where they're thinking about them, loving them, sending them video messages or other ways. You know, we can be thinking about the family and how we love them and the way they love us and the things that we're doing to stay in communication, which gives you a feeling of joy. Or you can focus on the fact that you can't see them and kind of sit with that, which can give you a feeling of really feeling scarcity and like you don't have anything. And the truth of both of those situations is that you're not able to see your family right now. So mindfulness and what I try to teach isn't about um, ignoring feelings, right? There is a sadness and we need to pay attention to sadness because it's gonna keep popping up, but we don't need to spend all of our time there. It's good to train the mind to be focusing on that, um, which you know can, can be elevating. And really, that's what mindfulness is about. It's about training the mind the way we do at the gym with our muscles. Mm -hmm. um, mindfulness and meditation is about training, training the mind to focus um, on whatever's happening uh, without judging it, but learning to cultivate qualities of the heart like love and gratitude. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, and what a lifelong practice that is to just really tune inward. Um, yeah. What's a, you know, a quick, one easy thing that a resident can do just to get started in this? So a great thing that I love to teach people is about the breath, because the breath is always there. You don't need to believe in anything to feel your breath. So what I ask people to do is if they can, put two feet on the ground, um, feel their body. You can do that now, yep. you can do it with me. Um, feel your body, let, let your eyes close if that's comfortable. I'm gonna do that too. Um, feel your body, so not just thinking about it in your brain, but feel your body. What does it feel like in this chair? And because I think we're in such need of touch right now, if you take your right hand and put it on your heart and your left hand on top of your right, I don't want to do that because of the microphone, but, <laughs> but see if you can maybe feel your heartbeat. And that's a great moment of gratitude. I feel the beating of my own heart. And then seeing if you can sense and tune into your breath, the way when you breathe in, the breath brings your chest forward and up. And as you breathe out, the breath moves out and down. And just in this very simple way, right, you can just feel the breath breathing in or breathing out. Or you can add something on top of it, like breathing in love, Breathing out safety, right? So you can add whatever you want, but it's really just about staying connected in a really simple and easy way. Breathing in and breathing out. Maybe do it seeing if you can stay focused for two or three or four breaths. And then just kind of sit and feel and notice what comes up. You can open your eyes now. But the most important thing that I want to really teach people is whatever comes up, whatever it feels like, you need to be tender and kind to yourself. That's the most important thing. I want to thank you for joining us today and for sharing these tips. And I hope um, I hope that we can all just take a moment to kind of pause. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now for our positive news story. A little kindness can change the world. That's what 10-year-old Hannah wrote in a letter her mother posted on Facebook. She told her mom that she wanted to donate some savings to help the Chesterfield police officers who were going to lose some of their pay due to financial issues from the COVID pandemic. Then she decided to create a fundraiser. Her fundraiser cre uh, collected 2,400 in just a day and a half. She then went a step further in her kindness and used that money to purchase gift cards from several local restaurants and businesses. They presented the department with 232 gift cards to distribute among, among the officers. The, the department said it's enough for each officer and civilian police employ, employee to have two gift cards each. We can't even begin to put into words how grateful we are to Hannah and even more so what a special thoughtful person she is. 
So we'll end the post with how it started. This was from the police department. A little kindness can change the world. You did just that, Hannah. Thank you. A reminder for us all that a little kindness can change the world. That's our show for today, everybody. Remember to tune in to Channel 8 later. We have Exercise with Deborah at 1.30, On a Musical Note with Peter at 3.30. And don't forget, you can catch this episode of Good Morning Hebrew Home again on Channel 8 at 6.30 or on YouTube. Join, us, uh, join in tomorrow for our host, David Pomeranz. And once again, this has been Olivia Cohen with Good Morning Hebrew Home. We will see you tomorrow, same time, same place, same channel. Let's end off with some Mother's Day videos. Cohen out. Which is also my room and it is a very nice day outside here in San Francisco. Happy Mother's Day from all of us here in the Bay Area, from my parents Cheryl and Julian and from me, Christina, your granddaughter. We love you very much, Grandma. Hi, this message is for Nilda Tang. Hi, Nilda. Hi, Mom. It's Mikey and it's Sandra. Hope you're having a, a good time, a good day and um, we wish you a happy Mother's Day. And right now we're playing one of your favorite songs. I hope you're dancing. And when we come to see you soon, we will dance with you. We love okay? you. Okay, we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Bye.